it's strange for me to have so much, but this is what God told me to do. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go through it, and, and you're going to have to either be able to keep up on your Android pads or iPhones or whatever you got, or in your Bible, or get a pen and a piece of paper, write these down because they're good to read, good to remember. All right. <clears throat> Ephesians. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast. By grace you are saved through faith. What is grace? What is grace? Good old Daniel Webster says, Grace is a freely given, unmerited favor and love of God. Freely given, an unmerited favor of the love of God. Now I will tell you this. I in no way, shape, form, or fashion deserve God's love. None of us do. God gave it. Freely. Well, if it's grace per se, through faith, what is faith? Well, Hebrews 10 says, or Hebrews 11 says, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. That, by the way, is Hebrews 11.1. 1. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. And then, of course, we went, on over, <clears throat> we went over to Danny Webster here, and he says, faith is the trust in God and His promises as made through Jesus Christ and the scriptures by which humans are saved. Now, that is faith. Basically, believing without seeing. Who here has ever seen Frederick Remington? Does anybody know who Frederick Remington is? Oh, okay. Three or four hands. Everybody sees all these pictures of the cowboys and they're racing and, and on bucking horses and things like that. You know, on the Remington, he, he does these these uh, bronze sculptures. Frederick Remington, one of the best, one of the greatest known uh, Western artists in the world. Has anybody ever seen him? He's dead. What? <laughs> I hope you haven't seen his daddy because Frederick Remington and his daddy have been dead for quite some time. But anyway. Frederick Remington, we have never seen him. I've seen pictures of him, that, of what they say is him. But the fact is, I know Frederick Remington lived at one time because of the fruits of his labor. Because of what I've seen him, what I see that he has created. The, pic, the, the, the paintings, the the sculptures, all these things. I know that Frederick Remington was a real person. That's faith. Faith. How many people came in here before you sat down, took a weight equal to that of yours, sat on the seat where you were going to sit to make sure it was going to hold you? Nobody? That's the definition of faith. You took it for granted that you were going to sit down and it was going to hold you. So we know what faith is. So it is through faith, or through grace, I can't even talk now, it is by grace through faith that we're saved. That is how we receive salvation. We believe that without a shadow of a doubt, God made the world, sent His Son Jesus Christ down on the cross for our sins. He has risen and is living and is coming back. That is where we get salvation. So there's three things that God wants us to do. First is achieve salvation, receive salvation. You receive it through prayer. Second, in Matthew 9, 9, I'm sorry, Matthew 4, 19. Matthew 4, 19. Jesus walking 
down the, the, sea of, uh, the Lake of Garrisonet, Sea of Galilee, whatever you want to call it. And uh, starting in 18, says, Jesus walking beside the Sea of Galilee. He saw two brothers, Simon and Peter, and his brother An Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the lake where they were fishermen. Come follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. At once, they left their nets and they followed them. A little bit later, the same in, it's still in Matthew, but it was in uh, Matthew 9, 9. As Jesus went from there, he saw a, a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he said. And Matthew got up and followed him. What is the second thing God wants us to do? Follow him. Follow him. So, we can't physically see the embodiment of Christ. How do we follow him? How do we know? We have his word right here. His word he left as, a, as a, an instruction for us to follow. So, I, I can tell you now, uh, being in the military, and I've got somebody that can cooperate this back here. Being in the military, if your leader is, is, is taking you into a situation that is, is very dangerous, you don't follow his command. You don't usually follow him back. They usually carry you back in a little vinyl bag. He says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me and do what I say. And he tells a, he tells a young man in the, in the 19th chapter, if I can get to it, 19th chapter of Matthew. Starting in, in 16. Now a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what must I do? To, uh, to get eternal life. Why do you ask me about that? Uh, about what is good, Jesus replied. There's only one who is good. If you want to enter a life, obey the commandments. Which ones? The man inquired. Jesus replied, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony. Honor your father and mother, and love your neighbor as yourself. All these I have kept, the young man said. What do I still lack? Jesus answered, if you want to be perfect, Go sell your possessions, give a gift to the poor, you will have treasure in heaven, then follow me. In, uh, in uh, some of the books it says, you know, it said take up your cross and follow me. Now does that mean that we're all supposed to go out and sell everything we got, give to the poor, and leave, live a pauper's life just uh, concentrating on the Word of God? No. No, that's not what he was saying. The reason he said that was because the man held his money higher than he did God. So, what are we supposed to do? Be happy with what God gave us, and yes, meditate day and night on the Word of God. Follow God. God does not want everyone to be a poor pauper. God wants us to be successful in all that we do. Why does He want us to be successful? Because if we're following God, we are successful, others will see that and say, look, there must be something to what they're saying. But if, we, if we're constantly down in the dumps, we're beating ourselves up about every little thing that happens, we're, we're professing to be a, a, a Christian, but we're never happy, people are going to look at that and say, you know what, I really don't want that. That's not exactly what I was hoping for. But the truth is, God will provide everything we need. Everything we need. Maybe not everything we want, but everything we need. He knows the desires of our heart. So, we have received salvation. We have followed Christ. Now, what must we do when we're following Christ? Do we just read the Bible? Do we just pray? 
and then tell everybody we're Christian, and that's it? No. 1 John. Ooh, I turned the wrong way. I'm sorry. Let's go back to James. James 2, 14. James 2, 14. What good is it? I got to get my old man glasses on here for a second. Somebody keeps changing my Bible up for something with smaller words. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and, and, and daily food. If one of you says to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, by faith, by faith itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. I will show you my faith by what I do. And, and, and Christ has said, and I said this a few weeks ago, a tree is known by its fruit. I have faith in God. I have faith that if God tells me today, you need to pack up and move to Alaska, i got a job for you. I have faith that God will provide for me. God will provide not only the way to get up there, but when I get there, He'll provide a place for me. Thank God He has not said that to me. Because those of you who know me know I really don't like moving to Alaska because it's cold. I would rather the 115 degree heat than I would the negative 15 degree heat. So, I have faith. I have faith and I don't mind stepping out and doing things on faith because God has never let me down. Have I stepped out a few times and expected God to catch me? That's not what He wanted to do? Yes. And He let me fall on my face. But if I'm prayed up and I know or I have a strong feeling that this is what God wants me to do and I step out on faith for the, the, the betterment of God's kingdom, God has never let me down. Now, if it's not what He wanted me to do, but I thought it was, and I did it for Him, He has eased me out of it. And He will provide another direction. But if it's God's will, if it is God's will, we do not want to ignore it. Because again, you will fall on your face. I have. Several times. And in 1 John, that's not the right book. 1 John 2 and 14. This, this came up on, uh, on PJ's phone this morning as the verse of the day. And it kind of went along with what we were doing. the wrong thing. I knew this didn't look right. 1 John 3.18 And that is Dear children let us not love sorry Dear children let us not love with words or tongue but with actions and truth. Let us not love with words and tongue but actions and truth. Actions God has called us to action. And I was reading the, the minor, in the Minor Prophets and, and Joel, something in Joel just really struck me. I remember in Isaiah, and I don't have the exact, exact verse and, and, and all here, but I can, I can find it for you if you need me to. I remember in Isaiah when he was talking about... Uh, the Nebuchadnezzar is about to come down and, and spank you real hard and you're going to, don't resist. You know, he was talking about 
taking your plowshares, uh, your plowshares, uh, taking your swords and banging them into plowshares, and your spears and turning them into, into pruning hooks. But in Joel, he was talking about when Christ again brings his nation up to the forefront. He says, call, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go to this. So I want, I want to read it. I want to read it right. And it's Joel. Come on, Monte. Here it is. Uh, this is Joel 3, 9, and 10. Proclaim this nation, uh, proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Let all the fighting men draw near and attack. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. In America, we have been under attack. In the world, we have been under attack because we believe in a one true living God, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, which leads us today. We have been under attack by everybody. Why? I can only speculate that they just feel guilty that they don't believe. Okay? But the truth is, we're not to just sit back and take it. Um, I was on the, I'm on a, uh, a bladesmithing thing on the internet, and, and I saw this man had had gotten together. He was, a, he's a, you know, veteran bladesmith, and he got together and he made all these patterns that you can print out and use them for uh, patterns for knives. I uh, read through the article, and, and at the bottom had comments. In the first comment, a man said. God bless you. You know, thank you for this. All of us, uh, a lot of us, are, are you know, novice bladesmiths, and, and we like to see this. The very next comment: There is no God. Why? Why, why? why did they attack this guy just for being nice? And of course, you know there, there's the, the huge debate now on, on whether there is a God or not. And truthfully, and I thought about this long and hard when I did this, there's not one thing I can do to prove to you that there is a God if you do not believe the evidence. I didn't say I couldn't prove there's a God. I said I can't do it if you don't believe the evidence. And there's no way that you're going to make me believe that there's not a God because I do believe the evidence. So why, the, why the, the debate? I would have simply said, God bless you too, I'll pray for you. But we're under attack. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to attack back. But I'm not a soldier. You know what? In, in, in January 2003, I was not a soldier. I was a farm kid. In February 2003, I was a soldier. And after I retired, guess what? I'm a farmer again. Okay, let's not look at me. Let's look at George Washington. Father of our nation. He was a professional soldier. No, he was a tobacco farmer. Who went... When his nation called, stepped up, led our armies, and won our war of independence. And I want you to think about this. We did not win the war and then say, we're a nation. No. 1776, we stood up and said, we are a nation. We had a declaration of independence. In 1776, 1783 is when Washington... Uh, received the treaty with Cornwallis, took the surrender from Cornwallis. That's a, a long time in there. What do we need to do as Christians? Oh, and by the way, when he was through being a soldier, he went back to tobacco farming. Okay? So he took his plowshares and he beat it into a sword and then he took it right back and beat it into a plow. Okay? But what we need to do as Christians? We need 
to get into action. We need to declare victory for our Father God through His Son Jesus Christ in Plano, Murphy, Lucas, St. Paul, Allen, Campbell, Campbell. Uh, all these places, Richardson, all these places around here. We need to declare victory for our God and then get into action and start fighting the war. Because I promise you, and it says it in the Bible, if you need me to, I can look it up and I will show you that we will stand before God and give an account of what we've done. And I do not want to be standing there when God said, when God says, I told you to get up and evangelize Collin County. What did you do? Well, we had church. Not good enough. We need to declare a victory for our God and fight this war. There are three things we need to do. I will go in, in reverse. We need to get into action. Before we get into action, we need to follow God. Before we follow God, we need to receive salvation. There are two things he said in, in, in Ephesians 6.17. The two things you need to carry, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. As we see this helmet of salvation, it's simple to do. It's an easy little prayer. All you have to do is say a prayer and start a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Follow me. Lord, I'm sorry. I've done wrong. Lord, I know, I know for a fact that Christ came into this world and, and He died for my sins. For the things that I've done wrong, He died for me to, to give a blood sacrifice so that I wouldn't have to go to the devil's hell. Lord, I believe that He was buried. He was risen three days later. He lives with you today and He is coming back. I confess Him today as my Savior. I want to start a relationship with Him. I want, him, I want you to guide me. I want you to guide me through this world straight on up into heaven when I leave it. Ask these things in your son's holy name. Amen.